Hello and welcome everyone to my Python tutorial series and I'm excited to finally be doing this one for you guys. I have been wanting to do a Python series on my channel for a very, very long time. I just never got around to doing it. Actually, I did record some Python videos a, a while back. I started a series two or three years ago. I finished the first handful of videos and I never uploaded them because I never finished the series and I just got sidetracked and I thought about actually uploading those videos. But the problem is the sound quality is gonna be so low, I don't really feel like you guys would enjoy that because the microphone I was using at the time, uh, it was just horrible. So instead of uploading those videos, I unfortunately decided to start over, but I think that means that you guys will benefit from having a better tutorial series. and. I know that this is a uh, Linux channel, so you might be wondering, you know, why am I doing a you know a series of programming videos on a you know, Linux channel? But you know, Python is extremely common in Linux administration, and if you learn it, it's actually just one more powerful tool you can use to, um, you know, in your system administrator tool set and even your Linux administrator tool set. In fact, my favorite uh, open source project, Ansible is written in Python. So if you decide to write in Python, you are definitely in good company. So in this particular video, we're not gonna actually do any Python coding just yet. So I'm going to talk about what you need to get started. And then in the next video, we're gonna actually interact with Python and, and start um, on the process. So if you already have Python installed, go ahead and move on to the next video. But the purpose of this video is just to outline the overall uh, theme that we're going to be using in this series and just make sure you have what you need to be started. Now, since this is a Linux YouTube channel, obviously, uh, if the name wasn't any indication enough as it is, I am not able to show you how to install Python in Mac OS or Windows. So you, unfortunately, if, if either one of those platforms are yours, you would need to consult the documentation for installing Python on that platform. I don't have a Mac. I don't have a uh, Windows PC to show you the process there. And I'm going to be doing everything from a Linux machine when we start writing these programs. However, Python is a cross-platform language. So the code that I give you, you, you know, you could use it in pretty much any OS, it, unless I say otherwise. If I run into a situation where something is going to act differently in a different operating system, I'll mention it. But otherwise, all the code that I give you in this series should work regardless of what operating system you're actually running. I just wanted to mention that in this video, I'll show you the uh, you know process in Ubuntu, how to access the Python shell, just so that you're aware of how to get to it. But if you're not using Ubuntu, um, consult the, do the documentation for your operating system and you should totally be fine. So the theme of this uh, actual series is gonna be system administration, specifically Linux system administration. Now, when we first start, it's gonna be just generic Python basics. I'm gonna show you strings, if statements, all the common things that you would expect. But then as we go further into this series, you're going to see some system administration specific to Linux being done via Python, which may include something like running a shell command through Python, or even maybe even setting up a cloud server. That's something that I'm thinking that we're going to be doing as we go along. So in this video, I just wanna make sure that you have Python installed. So now I'm gonna switch the camera here to my laptop. And I made the text pretty big, so you should be able to see the output regardless of the resolution of your screen. And what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that we have Python installed. So which Python is what you can do. And the which command in Linux just basically tells you where a command is. So for example, the ls command, which we all know what that does. If you do which ls, it tells you where that binary is. So you can see that the ls command is installed on my system because there it is in the terminal. But when it comes to Python, we may or may not have that installed. Now most of the time you're gonna have that installed because most if not all Linux distributions actually come with Python out of the box. You can confirm that by just typing which Python, press enter, and you can see that I'm at user bin Python. So I'll clear the screen. And um, actually the next thing that I wanna talk about is Python 2 versus Python 3. 
Now, I'm not actually going to go over the differences between the two in great detail. There's, there's some big differences and things like that. Um, but the debate is, which one should you use? Now, when I first started in Python, there's a huge debate. Should I use Python 2? Should I use Python 3? That debate is over. It's Python 3. That's the future. That's what everybody should be using. Python 2 is in maintenance mode. Will you need to learn Python 2? Maybe. If, you're, if your company has some Python 2 programs you're still maintaining and you don't have the available hours to convert it to a Python 3 app, yeah, you're probably going to end up using Python 2. They're similar enough that so much of it applies between the two that it's not really that hard to pick up the difference. But any new project that you start with Python should be done in Python 3. The only difference might be is if you, you know, you require a library or a module and it's just not available in Python 3. I highly doubt that's going to be the case or that you're going to find that because almost everything of actual value has already been ported to Python 3. But then the natural question is, what Python version do I even have installed? Well, here I'm going to show you how to find out. So assuming that you have Python already installed, it's just Python dash capital V, and that's going to show you what version of Python you have installed. You can see here that I have Python 2.7. This is Ubuntu. It defaults to Python 2. As of the time I'm recording this video, the Ubuntu distribution has not yet moved to Python 3 as its default. If you're using something like Arch Linux, for example, they have moved to Python 3. So the Python command in Arch Linux will be actually pointing to Python 3. So in Ubuntu, it's simply Python 3 as the command instead of just Python. And if I do the dash capital V, you'll see that that gives me version 3.6.7. So Basically, what you have to do is make a mental note. We're using Python 3 in this course, so you'll find out based on the documentation with whatever distribution you're using, what it defaults to, whether or not you use the Python command or the Python 3 command. Distributions that ship with Python 3 by default, the command will just be Python. And then when you do Python dash capital V, it'll say Python 3. But then you'll also have a Python 2 command for backwards compatibility. And then it's the other way around. In Ubuntu and Debian, for example, it's Python 3 if you want to use a Python 3 interpreter, and just Python if you want to use Python 2. So to install Python, you just use the package manager. If it's not already installed, like for example on Ubuntu, you do sudo apt install Python 3, and you just go ahead and install it. So if I press enter, it's going to tell me it's already installed and it's the newest version. There's nothing for me to do. It's already installed. But if you don't have it installed already, you just simply run your distribution's package manager and install the appropriate package. So for example, if you run Python 2, or excuse me, if you run the Python command and it tells you that you actually have Python 2, then you need to install Python 3. If you have Python 3 as a command, you're already good to go. So just refer to the documentation to find out what you need. So now that you have Python on the system, you have what you need to continue with this uh, tutorial series. So in the next video, I'm going to show you some very basics and how to get into the Python shell. And you're going to see how to uh, you know, do a few Python commands. And then as we go from there, we're going to build into complete programs that are going to show you exactly how to use Python. So we're going to start at the very beginner, completely noob level, and then we're going to work our way up to um, probably advanced beginner or partially intermediate level. I don't think this series is going to go advanced, so I just want to make sure you're aware of that straight from the very beginning. So with that said, guys, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching my video, guys. I really appreciate it. If you want to help me out, go ahead and check out my sponsor and my cloud server provider, Linode. Linode now features a new and improved dashboard, their cloud manager, that makes it an absolute breeze to set up your own Linux server. They even have Arch Linux. How cool is that? And of course, they have all the staples such as CentOS, Debian, Ubuntu, Fedora, and more. And it's very easy to set up a server near you. In fact, Linode currently has nine worldwide data centers with two more set to appear this year in India and Canada.
So definitely check them out, guys. I appreciate them as a sponsor. I appreciate you guys as a viewer. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe to my channel. I will have more content coming for you very soon. Stay tuned.